Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to look at common failures in jig masters. And uh, I got a whole pail of them that I'm going to take you through, show you how to diagnose what the issue is, and, and how to start on the uh, repair. But before we do that, I wanted to give you, and specifically Rudy, who sent this uh, this pen battle in, I wanted to give you an update. Uh, if you recall, this one came to us in a basket full of parts. Got some left over here. Actually, these are the replacement parts. But um, this one, we put it all back together with the exception of a cross wind block that uh, was broken. And so, uh, and the gear, if you remember the gear, all the teeth were shaved off of that. And uh, we went ahead and we ordered the gear, the cross wind gear, the cross wind block. And uh, also, when they took this apart, they took a drag reel, uh, the drag knob apart, and uh, it simply is a lot easier just to get the drag button and a lot more cost effective. So we replaced all of these parts. When we put it together the last time, the shaft wasn't going up and down because of the broken cross wind block. And I'm happy to report that this reel is back and working nice and quiet. I'll shut up for a minute. And uh, we're going to get this one back to Rudy so he can go fishing. So there you go. Uh, now stay tuned, I'm going to uh, take a bucket of reels that I just received from a charter boat that I work on. Um, they're all jig masters, they've all been in service about a year and a half to two years. This is the second season for them now and there's a lot of failures in there. And uh, we'll go step by step and I'll show you what's failing or we'll make a hypothesis about what's failing and we'll talk a little bit about how to repair them. Thank you. Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle and I'm coming back. Uh, we're going to look at common jig master failures and, and two important points. One of them is how to diagnose this, uh, a diagnosis of them. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're at a flea market, a garage sale, looking at eBay, doing whatever, and you're considering purchasing a jig master, we'll give you some tests to look at in terms of that. We'll give you some approximate costs to repair uh, what, if it is the diagnosis that's correct and we will uh, try and guide you through that. Now, many of you know that I work with a uh, charter boat that uh, does some heavy fishing here in the Northeast. They fish bluefish and striped bass and uh, large predators. They have chosen the, um, the Jig Masters as part of their rod and reel rental fleet. It's a good price point. It runs about $60 or so for a new one. They are relatively durable. Uh, word of caution, these are commercially used reels, and if you look at the uh, warranties on the Penn Jig Masters, it'll tell you that the warranty does not apply to that. Why is that? This boat is out about 270 days a year. Many of them are on double trips, and the, uh, they're constantly in use. They're not hosed off after a, a, um, a trip. They're often put into the rod and reel boxes and uh, the heat of the day will evaporate the salt water and cause the corrosion and cause junk and, and stuff to build up and cause parts to seize. So uh, let's take a look at some of these. We'll show you some common causes and uh, I can guarantee you that at least 90% of these will be put back into service as part of what I do for that uh, fishing boat. No particular order. I'm going to pick this one up. And the first thing you want to do when you're considering buying a, rod, a reel, take a look at the overall condition. Now I'm going to tell you all of these are in you know tough condition, right? They're used frequently. They have a lot of buildup in terms of um, salt. In some cases, that salt is eaten into the spools. If it's very well beaten or eaten into it, you probably want to avoid that because that will wear the line. Uh, but uh, this one happens to be the uh, double ball bearing reel. I think it's the 505 series if I remember. I'm having trouble seeing. But uh, a couple of things to note on this one. It does work. Uh, the, they do have adjustable bearings. We have a screw. A lot of the uh, commercial captains will take that thumb screw out and put a regular screw in there so that they don't lose the side plate. And I can tell you that there's a reel in here somewhere. Uh, I probably put it off to the side where the side here it is, where the side plate was lost. It uh, went overboard. So this is nothing but a parts reel uh, now. 
but that's a uh, common failure. Don't be afraid to pull that screw out. If you do, be very careful. This is a Bakelite plate. It will shatter, but be if you've lost the screw, if the screw is not holding any longer, you can replace that with a standard uh, screw. In this case, the reel is turning. Is, uh, I want to check to make sure that the anti-reverse is holding. It's a tooth-geared re uh, anti-reverse. I have a, um, a bridge here where I can show you a little bit of how that works. You have the anti-reverse dog, a spring, and beneath the main gear there is a tooth gear. And that tooth gear holds the anti-reverse in place. That's how it stops it. So you want to check when you're purchasing these if the uh, make sure that the anti-reverse is working. Uh, the failure here I'm guessing other than it needs a good uh, cleaning and relube is the handle. The handle knob is very loose on this one. It is worn over time. This is the modern handle. It's a rubber handle and it's got an awful lot of play in it and I imagine he took it out of service for that reason. But we'll go ahead and lube it. I have replacement handles. We'll go ahead and put it on. If you were to buy this at a flea market you probably shouldn't spend more than $10, $15 max. You should expect to buy a new handle which is going to run about $10. Expect to spend time cleaning this up and lubing it but otherwise the piece is seem to be op operational and nothing else uh, looks like it needs to be replaced there. Okay, let's, uh, let's grab this one see what's going on. So this is an older style one now. This is the burgundy side plate. So this one is one of the originals. We're missing a screw here. So again, when you're looking at, um, at the older reels, you want to make sure that all the pieces and parts are there. You want to make sure you want to check these side plates, make sure they're not cracked. This one again, as I mentioned, a lot of the captains will replace that screw. And uh, let, this one turns very tight. Now sometimes that's a matter of customers over tightening the bearing. No, that's not the case here. This is an adjustable bearing side. It comes in and out. But uh, this is still turning very tight. My guess is there's one of two things going on in here. The first guess would be is that it hasn't been lubed in a long time. This is kind of a, a situation where the captain uses the reels until they break and then they come into the bucket and then they come to me. So my first guess is lubrication. The second one is it's possible that line has gotten trapped in here and that would also slow the reel down. So again, don't be afraid of purchasing a reel like this if you have a replacement screw, if the side plates are in good condition, and if the reel is turning. And you also want to make sure on it, it is the reel turning. Flip the free, uh, free spool and uh, I, uh, I'm getting an indication now what, what's going on here. So I'm going to show you on a different reel. I think I have a problem on a different reel, but sometimes without the, with the lack of service and lack of lubrication, that spool bearing uh, the spool gear will seize to the spool shaft. Here's an example of that. So it's not like it's the first time I've ever seen that. Use the reel. Don't wash the reel off. Put it in the hot box for storage. And uh, in this case, the spool gear has frozen to the spool shaft. And not only that, but it looks like a couple of teeth were broken off on this when they tried to, to re, uh, remove that uh, or broken off in service as they're trying to get this thing to free up. So common problem. What do you do? You use heat. You use a, uh, a propane torch. You heat that up with fire. These are two different metals. They will expand differently. When you heat that up, you want to grab that with a pad. Uh, steel wool is a good one. Sometimes a kitchen scrubby is fine. Grab it with the pliers on the outside, remembering that it's hot. And you just want to kind of shake it back and forth to get that gear off. Then you'll want to use that steel wool again to smooth down the shaft of the spool, assuming that nothing else is bent out of round on it. And uh, you want to get a replacement spool gear in order to make that work. I would avoid a reel where you feel that that's the problem, that spool gear is about $13 and when you pay for shipping it goes to like $18. There's no guarantee that the spool is going to be true. That may have to be replaced as well. That's another $12 or $13. At that point you're more than halfway to buying a new reel. So I would I would avoid that. <laughs> and actually what I would probably do is look for something like this that's missing the side plate. This one we know the spool is in good condition. You can see it's uh, the shaft is clean and uh, it's a relatively uh, new reel. 
and uh, I would I would probably go with something like that as a parts reel and that's what I'll do here I'll use that as a uh, as an indication there so we've got a problem here and it's most likely that uh, picked up the wrong one it's most likely that's the case because when you go into free spool mode you're, uh, you've got the handle moving, which means that something's locked in there. That's either way that that lever is tripped, that handle is moving, which means I've got a frozen bearing on there. I'll show you that on another one. Okay, continuing right along here. That one's pretty obvious, right? Uh, there's something going on inside of that. Chances are it's uh, missing an, an adjuster here. Uh, the spool could have a buildup of um, salt. You can see as you look in here, there's an awful lot of salt and, and contamination in there. Uh, this one needs to be adjusted down. There's no question about that. But we're going to have to take that apart to see more about that one. We also have a very loose handle here that, uh, that needs to be tightened up. And I'm, as I'm looking, that whole shaft is loose. So this one may not be salvaged. Um, so when you get this... What's happened is it's worn over time, and you have to replace the bridge. This is the bridge assembly, remember? Uh, this bridge assembly is $18. So if you got $18 plus another 5 or $6 shipping, it's $25. Again, a new, new Jig Master is probably about $50. You'll probably find them on eBay for a nice conditioned one at about $30. Uh, I wouldn't go the route of replacing a bridge on this one. Okay, next up, what do we got here? So again, I, I test. I know that uh, in a lot of situations that any reverse doesn't work because of the use. I'm not seeing any issues with this one. I'm not quite sure why he put that in the basket. I'll take a quick look inside. See if there's anything obvious here. Uh, this one looks okay, so we're going to have to check. So one of the things I find on the boats... And a good thing for you to check if the seller will allow you to remove the side plate. It's always a good idea to remove that side plate. Take a look. In this case, this one's clean. In a lot of cases, you'll see corrosion on here. You'll see old grease. You'll see maybe a broken spring uh, for the free spool release. Uh, I like to check all of the reels that come into me from the boat because the boat vibrates a lot. And a lot of times, these screws shake free. That puts the... Uh, the frame out of true and that causes uh, causes a scraping like we heard on the other one. Right, put that one aside. Let's check this one out. Again an older one. It's the burgundy side plate one. You can see how heavily used these are. I don't pay too much attention. If you're going to fish the reel yourself I don't pay too much attention to cosmetics. Um, to me the fish don't know what's on the other end of the pole and they don't care how pretty your reel looks. Uh, you just want to make sure that the reel is capable of getting the fish in. You can probably find a reel like this on eBay, probably for $15. If it's operational and everything, it's good. However, uh, this one's got a problem in that the anti-reverse doesn't work. So that's this feature again here. You have the spring, the anti-reverse dog, and the pinion gear. Two failures on this. The, the dog can be worn. You can see a little bit of that here. Although it's, a, it's probably a little tough to see. But this, this should be flat. And you can see how there's a, uh, it's not flat. It should be starting out that way. So it's been worn down. And over time it just won't catch that clip there. The second thing is you may have broken teeth. Or worn teeth on the gear sleeve. So one of the two of those is going to be the issue. They're not terribly expensive to replace. The gear sleeve is it's around $7, I think. The dog is about a dollar and a quarter. So figure about $14, $15. A reel in this condition that's, that's pretty beat up cosmetically uh, it probably is a borderline decision as to whether you want to go ahead and do it. Now, I have a lot of pieces and parts left over from the broken reels that I've repaired over time for this uh, captain. So my agreement was saying, I'm just going to go use the pieces and parts from the, the reels that couldn't be salvaged. For example, here's a, here's a set of uh, drag washers and uh, the main gear. So if I have a problem with any of those, I'll go ahead and use that in, uh, in a repair set. Okay, let's see what this one is. All right, this is another case where the anti-reverse doesn't work. And that's, I'm finding that's a common failure. Now, again, if you're buying a Jigmaster, this, this video is not to discourage you from buying the Jigmasters. This video is to let you know that a reel that's used 270 times at least, 
a year and uh, probably 300 times before it sees a service is going to have some failures and this is one of them it uh, that um, what happens here is that that grease goes away over time if that grease goes away uh, these things wear faster when they wear faster you're in, uh, eventually you're going to have that failure in this uh, this functioning here so the anti-reverse one Let's see what we got on this one this one's frozen okay so I have a lot of these that freeze so there's two causes to that we showed you the one there's a cause where um, and this is my example I, I did this ahead of time just to make sure this one's frozen if you try to move the free spool release you cannot get free spool so if you take that apart what's going to happen is you're going to see that the spool comes out with the side plate which shouldn't be and that's because we're in that situation with the uh, spool that I showed you before that gear is frozen onto the uh, the spool sleeve you can't pull that out it's not going to work if it does you're going to bend the yoke you're going to bend the jack you're going to lose the springs what you need to do is take off all of the side plate handle star adjuster the four screws for the bridge the eccentric lever all of that has to come off when that comes off all the pieces will fall out and then you can go ahead with what I was explaining before use the tor torch to get that gear out uh, make sure that you've smoothed out the shaft on the uh, spool and uh, once you do that then you can get a replacement gear okay that's what's going on with this one Let's see what else we got in this bucket this one's the frozen one so this one is I believe that's going to be this this one it's a uh, on the older ones like this is you got a chromed bridge and a brass shaft on the newer ones uh, some kind of alloys on both and what happens is again fishing these heavy salt water gets in here the rails don't get closed uh, hosed off after the use they're either put right back into service or they're put into a rod box in that rod box that temperature probably gets to 100 150 degrees easily on a hot sunny day out here uh, what's going to happen is that salt water is going to evaporate and eventually you're going to get something in here freeze up and this is what what the cause is right uh, to this one there's probably several here that are that yep here's another one so here's another one now what's happened with this one again if you're looking there is cures to this but check when you're looking at a reel to purchase when you got play like this what's happened is the pinion sleeve gear which is what we've been showing you with that anti reverse wherever I put that is gone out of round it's not holding the, it's not holding the handle anymore so in addition to the gear and the uh, spool gear uh, the spool the spool gear being frozen on in, uh, in this case the shaft that pinion shaft is frozen on and that pinion shaft is going to uh, sleeve gear is going to have to be replaced because you got the play here how did that happen well it's probably caught in the box and somebody probably tried to wrench it and just it's a soft metal I think I have a uh, replacement here. Yep, I have a replacement here. It's uh, not uncommon, right? So these are soft metal gears. What's happening here is that this piece here is out of round now, and uh, it's probably the weakest link in the chain. So what happens is that has to be uh, replaced on those reels. Let's just uh, take two more. See what else we got here another frozen one and another case where you can see that this is uh, the pinion sleeve is no good this one's frozen can't move it one more and the same thing so uh, there's a theme running here right there's a lot of these that are frozen and uh, let's take this one apart if we can just to see what the inside looks like so what kind of problems are we seeing here we've seen loose handles we've seen anti reverses that don't work We've seen spools where the spool gear is frozen onto the, uh, yeah, and this one, uh, wow, this is everything I've been talking about, right? Look at all of the salt water that is uh, uh, dried up, left the salt inside the reel. You can see it's actually eaten into the spool. This is supposed to be an anodized, is that the right word, uh, aluminum spool. But uh, in this case, the salt is so accumulated that it's eaten into that. 
you can see it here and again all this one's turning now so actually we'll be in good shape this one will need the uh, may need that gear sleeve replaced but if it's turning it can be fixed and maybe we'll do a video on this one just to show you how to clean it all up put it back into service uh, just checking here so again if you're if you're working with a seller ask the seller if you can remove the side plate and that'll give you a view into this so if if you were purchasing this thing and it's kind of tough to turn right um, open it up and it's a mess and you can negotiate with the seller explaining to them that this whole thing either has parts that need to be replaced or that uh, if you get lucky enough it'll be uh, quite a job to clean that all up so so that's it so as I mentioned I get a uh, I get a bucket of these on about uh, every few weeks and the majority of these that we talked about have fixes and solutions to them it's a matter of how much you want to spend to get these uh, fixed up and uh, some tips on how, what to avoid so avoid the ones that are, that are truly frozen the economics of it just doesn't make any sense to go and buy the pieces and parts to try and put that back together uh, but the ones that are turning like this one you would avoid right but the uh, ones that are turning you have a chance at uh, repairing and it's just a matter of how much you want to pay for the parts here you go in this case it's well, he's, he's got uh, wine that's jamming this one up so let's see if that nope, that didn't change it at all so this is frozen but uh, avoid something like this it just doesn't pay to uh, to spend a lot of time on effort on that one but uh, I hope that's been valuable so uh, as I mentioned uh, I'd like to share with you my experiences. If you like these videos, um, please uh, like them on uh, in the annotation. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.